I'm Mark Lewis. I'm the VP of Application Services at Canonical. In that role, I'm responsible for all of our partnerships with ISVs and IHVs. Today, we have one of my partners here today, Spectra Cloud. Will is representing them. Will, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, I'm William Crum. I'm a Senior Defense Success Engineer over at Spectra Cloud, and as well a Sergeant over at Marine Innovation Unit, supporting software throughout the stack. Thanks for joining us here today, Will. Tell us about Spectra Cloud. What is it you folks are doing? Yeah, so Spectra Cloud is a multi-cluster management platform, which is basically means we support deploying infrastructure regardless of the environment. So we're an edge-first company, ensuring that you can provision any operating system like Ubuntu on top of any distribution of Kubernetes with all the different components that are required for the Kubernetes stack. So that's existing from edge bare metal devices all the way up to enterprise cloud environments. I think you started to introduce well where Canonical might come in because it's Ubuntu, but possibly some extra products as well that you've, you, you've taken advantage of there? Exactly, yes. So we support deploying Ubuntu Pro um, as well as deploying you know, AWS EKS. So we can ensure that if the customer wants to provision their own EC2 instances with Ubuntu and Ubuntu Pro, or if they just want to use AWS EKS instances, we support deploying that as well. And you lead to a consistent experience for folks, depend, regardless of where they're actually deploying. Yeah, we, we do. So we support you know, ensuring that Kubernetes you know, is deployed in any environment. Um, we're seeing a trend where people have different environments across different applications and all these different plethora of requirements. Um, so what that really means is we ensure that the applications that are important are actually deployed where they need to be. That's fantastic. I, I think, again, you've sort of hinted at something I was going to ask about. Is like, what trends are you seeing in the federal market at the moment? Yeah, so a lot of the trends is we originally, when we did JWCC and all the different original cloud contracts came into play with the JEDI contract, is everyone moved over to the uh, cloud environments. Everyone wants to make the big bet on ensuring that everything's highly available within the cloud. But you know, sometimes the different cloud environments and different purposes where you know AI and ML exist, it needs to be also deployed to the edge. So ensuring that you know cloud environments also edge get deployed. Um, so we, we we really support a lot of different special requirements, and that that trend being is everyone moving back to the edge. That that's super interesting. I mean, one of one of the talking points of the year has been well for some time has been AI, and and you're saying that I guess it's the proliferation of what the data generation means that that the AI capability is dragged whether it wants to or not to the edge. Is that, exactly. Is that... Yeah. So as we're seeing, like most sensors, all different deployments, so the data collection also needs to be at the edge. And then if we can drive those machine learning capabilities on the physical devices with the soldier, it just aids you human aid aided design. Fantastic. And AWS fits into this at the edge as well as, well as in the, the data center? Yeah, exactly. So uh, with AWS outposts and snowball devices, people can take certain parts of the AWS all the way out to wherever they need to, even in those degraded and denied areas. So I can spin up enterprise capabilities in AWS GovCloud and also ensure those same capabilities are deployed on outposts or snowball devices. And you're working with NVIDIA on this? I'd be really interested to hear what you folks are doing in that regard, because it is such a hot topic. And in the defense space, it's, it's relevant, but also probably especially difficult. Yeah, so um, what we do is we ensure that the infrastructure provision out to the edge and also those different AI ML capabilities are all central. So what that really means is out to the edge, we ensure that different partitions or different fragmentations of the models are deployed so that the models that you do need to utilize are there and available. So that what that means is you can take key components of the model or smaller form factors and deploy that and utilize that as a smaller form factor LLM or anything as such. Okay, so regardless of the use case, you're ready to, as you say, from small form factor up to fairly sophisticated compute can all be facilitated through, through Palette. Exactly, yeah. That's super useful. On the other side, um, what is Canonical doing for you know, the federal and public sector? I think, to your point, keeping going with that theme, um, we've recently announced everything LTS which takes the LTS concept we have around Ubuntu and a whole lot of open source components and brings it into the container space particularly. And so we're, we're building more and more containers that have that LTS wrap around them. So the assur assuredness that it's shipping is what you need. It will be maintained across the lifecycle and you can enjoy the maintenance and enterprise support that everyone is familiar with from the Ubuntu world and Pro, but actually at that artifact level of the container as well. 
Is that something that would appeal to Spectra Cloud and your customers? Yeah, absolutely. I'm seeing a huge trend with deployed software not necessarily having the newest versions being LTS. And so now that essentially all of the products are LTS, that you can ensure that the minimal you know, upgrades and everything like that will be supported no matter which stage of you know, digital modernization our customers and federal public sector are at. So that's absolutely amazing. That's fantastic to hear. So it's always good to have validation of, uh, of your product as you go to market. One other thing that we've done recently, um, and in fact we spoke about first at an AWS DC summit last year, is we are galloping through chiseling our containers. Mm -hmm. uh, chiseled containers are distro in style, so they're composed from slice definition files, which really define the files you need at runtime that would otherwise be in larger packages that get layered into a container. Mm -hmm. They also have a couple of other factors around them. Because they're designed for, for runtime and production and secure operation, we ship them without a root user, no package manager, and no shell, which means whole categories of attack and, and, and frankly, exploit are removed. These have been super popular, and we, we've worked our way through all of the tool chains and runtimes that we support at Canonical in the last year. So those are available to Spectra Cloud and your customers. And we're increasingly moving into other spaces. So think uh, particularly data, um, whether it be Mariah or MySQL or Postgres or something like that, or Redis or, or, or potentially um, RabbitMQ or Kafka. These are all things that will come out in hardened production grades, very small form factor. Um, we are, we're seeing a lot of take up in the, um, particularly in the, what I would call the makerspace that obviously I represent at Canonical, or not, not alone, I hasten to add. Um, so software vendors like yourselves and people actually building devices, exactly as you say, autonomous vehicles, anything that looks like hardware through to software, um, it's just inherently going to be a more efficient uh, platform to to build and then to maintain, uh, particularly with our assistance. But then in operation, we see it use less resource as well, which is, again, when, when you, you folks are so focused on the edge, is, is a, a really interesting capability that hopefully goes through to, because of course, edge is almost always in some way more resource constrained than, than data centers and clouds. And so having that smaller form factor of container is, I think, really relevant. Yeah, definitely. As we try to get Edge smaller and smaller, having smaller containers are definitely going to help for sure. Will, it's been a pleasure having you here today. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it and really looking forward to taking this partnership to the next level together. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your time today.